Hello everyone, I'm Mark Stongrass, and today I wanted to talk to you about color rules and the different color options that you have available to you when creating visualizations in Domo. Domo gives you quite a few different ways to color different bars or text in your charts and tables. Some are pretty obvious, some are not so obvious, and I hope to uh, show you a few things maybe that you haven't seen before and help you with your uh, different visualizations that you're doing. So why don't we get started? Okay, so we'll start with some of the uh, basics and some that kind of walk you through. And if you're not familiar with different color options that you have in here, typically on about every chart down at the bottom, there is the colors section. And in this case, I wanted to assign a particular color to each uh, bar, and you can do that by going to the color section, selecting what you've got in the series, for example, and then saying, hey, okay, for vendor, I'm going to select which vendor I want, and I want to assign them the color of green. So I'm going to assign that green. And for vendor B, then I want to assign color purple and C, pink. When you get the option here, you can have Apply only to this card or to all cards, which means any data set powered by that, um, any card powered by that data set is going to be using that. I don't typically use that. I think it's a little too far reaching for, for me and ends up being things I don't want uh, showing. But this is helpful if you want to create a kind of a unified look throughout your dashboard and you can have everything then the same color throughout all your, all your cards. And I'll often, once I create one, I'll do a save as and start creating my next chart so that I don't have to rewrite the color rule every single time. And that's pretty standard one. Next one over is, hey, maybe you want, uh, depending on the value, you want it to be one color and depending on another value, then you want it to be a different color. So again, down the uh, color rules here, we're looking at balance, which is what's in the Y axis. And that's again, what you're restricted to are columns in the chart. So I can choose balance and saying, hey, on this one, I can, since it sees it's a numeric value, it will give me these different options. And I can say, hey, when it's greater than or equal to one, then make it green. If it's less than zero or zero, then make it red. And so then we get a nice, easy visualization uh, here to be able to see that. Um, you will find, and I've turned it off here for a second, I'll put it back. That when you do that, you're going to get a legend like this, which maybe isn't the friendliest and maybe not what you want. And so then I will often hide that legend and let kind of the visualization speak for itself. And you don't need um, a legend to tell you that. And I label my y axis with what this value is so people know what we're talking about here. So that's pretty helpful and uses pretty easy to put together. Next one is uh, maybe not so obvious when we're dealing with uh, table cards here. So you'll see one thing to know in the, without even using a color, color rule, see we've got some uh, positive and negative amounts here. And in here, just in the general chart properties, you can choose show negative numbers as red. So that works out in that set. You don't have to do anything special with the color rules. But what if you're maybe the opposite uh, case? Maybe you want uh, positive numbers to be red and your negative numbers to be green. Well, you can use the color rules. And in here, you'll see this is kind of looking blank right now because it's in place. But you'll assign a color. And then you're going to slide the when we did. Let's just do it like this, for instance. So we do our classic um fill what color we want well, that's going to make the background red and it's like well we don't want that it's a little too bold or you just want the text to be red instead so if we go back to fill we drag the opacity here down to zero and then in the table text choose this middle one here then this will make just the text red. And you'll also notice the other thing I did was uncheck this. So it doesn't 
highlight the whole row. We're just going to do that cell itself. And then we could do this again with the uh, less than or equal to zero. We did that and choose the green, per se. And again, choose the opacity down to zero. Then choose this, uncheck that, and apply only to this card. And now our green numbers are red and our positive numbers are green. Our negative numbers are green, rather, and our positive numbers are red. And that's what we were able to define. That's pretty handy. Um, something that kind of escaped me for quite some time, not understanding how that opacity worked with things and how that can affect the uh, values itself and not the cell color. Uh, the other thing you can do is with HTML table cards, this requires you to be selecting the HTML table card, but you can assign um, colors through using just some basic HTML it requires like the div element and the color, and then putting your value in there and then a closing div all in a concact statement. You can see with that, I've got these colored navy. Uh, the downside with doing this is that you'll see up here, this is you know our date field. You see over here on the left when it's standard date, then we've got our date and we can format things. But over here, it just sees it as a text to string and you don't have any date formatting. So you'll lose all of that uh, capability that you would normally have with the formatting. The same if it was a number, it would become a string and you don't have any of that number formatting to move it to currency. So that's a real downside of doing this, but it's um, something that uh, is available if you've got something tricky um, that the color rules can't do then this is a way to option and you could build out a case statement to do different colors based off different values and assigning the right div uh, style color to do that. So it is available, but there is a downside to it. Uh, other thing you can do, uh, if you're okay with uh, highlighting the bar, the whole row rather itself, is say we've got, well, if we look at our color rule, here, we're basing it off of this has coverage column. And if it's a Y, then we're going to color it blue. If it's N, we're going to color it gray. But maybe you don't want uh, this to be showing up. You don't want this column to be showing up for whatever reason. But you still want to color it. And these color rules do require the uh, field to be in the chart itself. So we've added has coverage to, to the chart. But then if we go to the general properties and hide columns, we can say hide column number one. And you'll see now that has coverage column is no longer showing, but where color rule is still in effect because we have it up here in the list of columns. So that is a pretty useful feature when you're needing to color something, particularly a row, particular color, but you don't really want that value um, or that column to be showing up in there. So that uh, hide columns feature allows you to uh, manipulate that and make that workable for you. A couple other things around table cards. This is an example where we've got, um, we've colored it as a heat map. So I'm not using the color rules this time in the tables. Uh, properties or the chart properties of a table card, you can say color is heat map, and then you can give it a theme. And then you can also tell it to look at independent column ranges for when it's using that theme. So it's just going to look vertically in here or what, how are these numbers uh, progressing from, you know, zero to hundred in this case and color it accordingly. And then look at the next column and uh, do that coloring. Otherwise if we were to uncheck this, then it might going to go system wide here and we don't necessarily want that. It's not uh, really what's uh, in play and how that's going to function. So this lets us uh, look at each column individually. You can also say, hey, I only want to look at columns three through 12. So it's not trying to color column two with these numbers in here or column one, which I don't know, I would have any way to do that. So those pretty helpful and being able to um, color that. 
and it really kind of takes away the need for the heat map table in my mind. I think heat map table kind of existed before they had the heat map options on mega tables. So um, you have actually have more chart properties available in the standard mega table than you do with heat map tables. So I'd investigate this option first before having to move to the, assuming you need the heat map table option in there. And this is the heat map table option, but you see it looks really exactly the same, no difference. So are the heat map charts. And within the heat map charts, you can do some new things now, which I'm not even using the, there are no color rules in this uh, example, but you've got the balance distribution. And the big thing is the diverging colors. So you can say, hey, show diverging colors. I wanna show one color for the upper area and a different set of colors for the lower area. And this tells you how many colors how many shades of that color do you want in each of those uh, ranges in the lower range and the upper range? And you got your midpoint value options in here as well. So you see if I change this to two, click away, you see there's only two blue ranges and two red ranges in here now. So um, you can play around with that and get kind of the look that you're going for. Um, and it's pretty, Gives you a nice little contrast uh, rather than just being all one shade of blue or all one uh, gradient of green. And another example of this is the, the state country maps. Being able to do that, you can do the same thing in there. Uh, you have those diverging colors and you can, again, color out uh, grays or reds, however you want that to, to look. So those are available in both of those types of charts. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, again, hopefully some new things maybe you didn't uh, quite know were available in there before. And as always, uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Best way is always on the Domo community uh, instance. So uh, I hope you have a great day. Thanks.